G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, well, Bitcoin still sort of ranging uh, up and down, up and down, that's what it keeps doing, just uh, staying in a tight little uh, spot, but we can have a look at the market cap first. So still over a trillion, which is good, but down, and again, you know, as Bitcoin's going up and down, the market cap is doing the same, people are getting in, getting out, taking profits and all the rest of it. We can see BTC dominance continues to drop though and ETH dominance continues to rise. But ETH is still stuck under that $1,400 mark. I think it's more so people are getting into the altcoins and things like that. You know, I don't really consider Ethereum an altcoin anymore, uh, but a number of uh, altcoins are on the Ethereum uh, protocol. So that's why the Ethereum uh, dominance would be rising. Uh, I would guess. But again, Ethereum's still up 16% for seven days. Uh, gas price is still a little bit high, 53. You know, we really want those single digits and, you know, ETH 2.0 and scaling and that just can't come quick enough. You know, I'm trying to do transactions at the moment and they're costing me anywhere from sort of $10 to $17. Now, if you're only trying to transact with a few dollars, then it just completely knocks, you know, the average user out of Ethereum. Uh, and look, in all fairness, I consider myself the average user. You know, if it's costing me $10 every time I want to do some kind of transaction, you know, I need to be transacting in, you know, basically hundreds of dollars to make it worth it. Uh, and most of the time I'm not transacting in hundreds of dollars. So at the moment it's making staking and uh, lots of other things quite difficult. But look, let's have a look. What's moving? Has there been any big movers? Certainly has. Icon on an absolute tear. Uh, curved Dow, so again, same thing uh, on an absolute tear. Uh, even more so, I mean, up you know, 130% in seven days, doing quite well. Hedera Hashgraph, uh, of course, when I finally gave up on it uh, and traded it for something else, it finally starts to do better. But look, in saying that, it, it hasn't done that well uh, considering the price I bought it at. So I was actually still right to uh, trade it for other coins that have performed better over a longer period. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe Hedera Hashgraph, you know, out of nowhere, just, you know, 10, 10Xs or 100Xs. VeChain, good to see it continues to make constant gains. Polkadot, again, continues to sort of go up. But as we can see, it's sort of up and it's down. Now it's just really in a, a bit of a ranging sort of pattern there. All right, what about losses? Has anything lost? Not too bad. Empty set dollar, I mean, they've been going down for a while, so that's not too great. Ocean Protocol, but again, still up 20% for seven days. So, you know, to retrace is not uh, anything too bad. Yearn Finance trading sideways. Uh, Cosmos, not doing too bad, you know. Again, these are basically, you know, single digit losses, which in the crypto world really aren't that bad. And again, the graph as well, you know, pumped 70 something percent. Well, it was probably more than 70, and now it started to retrace some. Block Stack, uh, likewise, pumped quite high, uh, pulled back. Now it looks like it's forming a bit of a base there. So, you know, that might be something to have a look at. You know, you'd have to look at a chart over more than just seven days, but maybe it's formed a bottom here, you know. Just something to look at. Uh, we won't be looking at that today, but as we can see, there's winners uh, and there's losers. But the main thing I want to have a look at is over here. Let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And this is what I drew yesterday. And at the moment, it seems to be playing out not too bad. So again, this was just following uh, the trend. But then I said I did think it would probably roll over here and possibly go lower. And at the moment, it's come and tipped right on that mark. Uh, and it seems to be holding tight. So, you know, tomorrow, you know, I guess is going to sort of see if we're going to break lower because it can pump up still and this can continue on until around about the 25th. So really, we've probably got about four days before we know, you know, the outcome of what's going to happen. But look, it could happen, you know, tomorrow. Who knows? Now, what we need to also remember, and I bring this up uh, somewhat frequently, is that it's the weekend, almost anyway. Tomorrow's Friday, so that's the start of the weekend here in Australia. So we generally have a bit of a weekend retracement. And this has already been going down for a number of days here. So is this going to be a weekend where it just turns around and, you know, goes upwards and breaks free of this downtrend? Or is this going to be continued uh, with more of this? As I said, it wouldn't surprise me if we just have a bit of a slow burn coming back down to sort of 27,000. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Uh, it's just, it wouldn't surprise me. 
we need to keep all things uh, in mind. Look, this could just recover tomorrow and, you know, go on and make sort of all, you know, new all-time highs, or it could just continue in here again for maybe another four or five days before we get a true breakout, and whether it's to the upside or to the downside, uh, who knows. But there are some things that uh, still make me think it could be to the upside, um, we're here. So, uh, well, not really this one. Um, no, I suppose this one. Look, largest asset manager BlackRock may start trading Bitcoin futures. Now, how much effect that will have on the actual Bitcoin price uh, is yet to be undetermined because this is just betting cash on what the price of Bitcoin will do. Uh, I mean, it does affect the price of Bitcoin to some degree, but you know, it would be nicer if. Uh, BlackRock themselves were investing in Bitcoin. Uh, they're doing a little bit uh, something similar to uh, Paul Tudor Jones, where he's just betting cash on the future price of Bitcoin. They're not actually investing in Bitcoin themselves. So, yeah, interesting that they, you know, they and again, it says they may start trading Bitcoin futures. There's no guarantee, but BlackRock uh, is quite a uh, large entity with a whole lot of money and... Yeah, interesting. Wait and see. Maybe BlackRock already has invested in other companies that own Bitcoin, uh, and this is just another way of getting exposure to it. You know, it's hard to say. Again, maybe they own some of MicroStrategy. Maybe they own some of Square Cash App or PayPal. You know, have shares in it. Who knows? But uh, you know, it would be nice to hear that BlackRock were actually buying Bitcoin. But futures will do for now. That's not too bad. All right, some good news for the crypto uh, markets. As we saw, you know, uh, Janet Yellen came out the other day and she was talking about, you know, we need to look for, you know, cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin being used uh, for nefarious, oh, excuse me, kind of reasons and all the rest of it. Uh, and we, you know, we did hear before about the uh, rules that they were going to bring in around crypto wallets, uh, you know, and all the the hurdles that it would have uh, created uh, for people to be able to transact crypto. So it seems that Joe Biden has come out and he's placed a general freeze on all agency rulemaking pending review, effective for 60 days from the date of the memorandum. Crypto uh, insiders have lauded the move with Compound fi Finance General Manager, sorry, General Counsel Jake Shavinsky stating, we have fought hard and earned the right to take a breath and rest. You net Jeanette Yellen isn't Steve Mnuchin. Uh, I'm optimistic. So Steve Mnuchin was the one that brought in these uh, rules. Uh, and, you know, it would have made it really hard to, uh, you know, use wallets and all the rest of it. You know, you would have had to, you know, put your name behind it and everything would have had to have been, you know, the whole KYC thing. I agree we need some KYC, but not for every single transaction and all the rest of it. It just would have made it too difficult. So the self-hosted wallet process made by FinCEN on December 18th under former U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, Mnuchin, if passed, it would require that banks and money service business submit reports, keep records and verify the identity of customers who make transactions to and from private cryptocurrency wallets. So as long as you stayed within uh, you know, the exchange or the bank or whatever, there was no issues. But as soon as you're taking it out and trying to put it back in, it just would have created a nightmare. It really would have made things difficult. The proposal has been widely criticised by industry leaders, including CEO, CEO of financial services firm Square, uh, for, God, excuse me, of financial services firm Square, Jack Dorsey, who said that crypto, sorry, can't even read, I'm struggling. The counterparty name and address uh, collection should not be required for cryptocurrency, just as it is not required for cash today. So it's good that we've got a 60 day reprieve at the moment. But look, in 60 days, we could get bad news and it could be worse than uh, what Steve Mnuchin uh, even had planned. So, uh, you know, good that it's, you know, it's not going ahead at the moment, but we still need to wait and see what the outcome will be. All right. This one was a bit concerning. So Bitcoin double spend spotted in the wild. So BitMex, BitMex Research has identified what it believes to be a double spent Bitcoin transaction worth $21. So... BitMEX research has identified a suspected double spend transaction valued at uh, 0.0006203 BTC, or roughly $21, and it doesn't appear to be an instance of that popular uh, replaced by fee wallet hack. So there was a little bit of a hack that got exposed, but it was only for certain Bitcoin wallets. 
that could double spend and it was a bit viral uh, on YouTube and things like that. You can go have a look at it if you want. But it looks like there's uh, another double spend uh, that has come up. And again, only $21, but it was pointed out uh, somewhere in here where they said, you know, people will say yeah, here. Um, so it appears an actual double spend has occurred on BTC, not an RBF, so replaced by a fee, but an actual double spend, a mere 22 USD, but this could have been 22 million. So uh, yeah, and I agree with that. Look, you know, it's, it's not about the money, you know, the value of it, it's the fact that it's done. Someone needs to do some further investigation uh, and find out what's going on there because we're all fairly invested in Bitcoin uh, and we need to know that it's safe and secure and all the rest of it. And if there are uh, double spends happening, uh, then that can be uh, somewhat concerning, would be one way to put it. All right. Now, this one's, uh, you know, someone saying uh, that Bitcoin uh, is almost uninvestable. So this, uh, it's a Barclays private bank executive who said it's uninvestable. Now let's have a look at what he says. For Mossa, so that's the gentleman, the price fluctuations associated with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are so extreme that investing, them, investing in them is not a good idea. All right, let's break this down. Let's say you invested in Bitcoin in 2015. I don't care what price it was. You would be laughing right now. Whether it was at the absolute peak in 2015 or even better at the absolute peak in 2000, uh, at the absolute bottom in 2015. Let's have a look at 2016. If you had have invested in Bitcoin in 2016, it wouldn't matter what price you invested in it, you're up. Let's have a look at 2017. It wouldn't matter what price you invested in it, you're up. Let's have a look at 2018. It wouldn't matter what price you invested, you're up. 2019, it wouldn't matter what price you invested, you're up. We are in price discovery. And for someone to come out and say this, it's just FUD. And they either haven't done their research or they're absolutely trying to FUD it and keep the price down. Oh, it's too volatile. Yeah, that's the whole point of it. But over time... The price just goes up. You've just got to be able to do a bit of research, find out when's a good time to get in, and then just hold. And if you decide to sell, when the good times to sell are. But to say that it's uninvestable, uninvestable, uh, I think he's spreading fud. And my guess uh, is they're probably looking at trying to get some Bitcoin and they just don't want the prices to skyrocket before they can get into it. Because if it's just him simply saying that and he has done absolutely no research other than going oh yeah the price is too crazy do some research let me know uh in 2000 or let's say 2025 if he still thinks bitcoin is not a good investment because look absolutely we're going to hit some kind of peak point and it's going to go down by a lot whether it goes down 75 you know 90 percent again who knows but again, short of there being something seriously wrong with Bitcoin, I would say in 2025, whatever price you're buying it at now, you're probably going to be up and probably be doing pretty well. So we need to be careful when we see stuff like this. My guess is it's mostly FUD. And for that exact reason, they want to keep it down. They're trying to slow the progress of cryptocurrencies because from a bank, he's from the old school, the walled garden. You know, they don't want things to change because they can't control cryptocurrencies. There's no way they can get in there and, you know, just kind of dominate uh, like they have with the current system. So, yeah, I would love to, I mean, he'd never tell me, but I'd love to say, do you really believe that? Or is that just, you know, uh, FUD so you can buy at a cheaper price? And I'm sure uh, that's probably what it is, not that he would tell me. All right, last but not least. So I did get a little bit wrong. I thought Gary Gensler was going to take over from Brian Brooks. He's actually taking over as the SEC. So this is the new gentleman who is going to take over uh, as Office of the Comptroller. So Biden to name former Ripple advisor as OCC head. So this could be really, really good news for Ripple because the, you know, the SEC has gone after him and now the OCC and the SEC are two different things. But at least uh, you know, this guy sounds like he's going to be crypto friendly. Uh, I really liked Brian Brooks. I think he did amazing things for cryptocurrencies, really brought it to the forefront and was one of the, you know, people who was really pushing it to the mainstream and that. And it was sad to see him go. But look, 
here's a guy who works for Ripple. Hopefully, he's going to be able to get in there and keep, you know, pushing, you know, forward the narrative that cryptocurrencies are a good thing and are the way of the future. And look, maybe he puts in a good word for Ripple and Ripple, you know, all of a sudden is not a security and, you know, things can go back to the way it was. But, you know, I don't know how much swing he's going to have with the SEC. And, you know, if the things that happened uh, with XRP uh, that have been alleged, well, I doubt he's going to be able to come in and convince people that simply, you know, let's turn a blind eye to it. But then again, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, so very interesting that, uh, yeah someone from cryptocurrencies uh, you know it it's kind of bullish you know again we go back to the news over here P president biden he's put a freeze on those fincen rules yes we got uh janet yellen uh yeah janet yellen in there and she said a couple of things about bitcoin and you know have wanting to regulate uh that at least so you know it can't be used for nefarious purposes and i suppose if it's just that it's all right but you know hopefully cryptocurrencies are going to be pushed further, you know, through the mainstream than uh, they are going to be uh, regulated. And it's sounding positive at the moment, but time will tell. Uh, let me know down below whether you think, uh, you know, Biden putting a, a freeze on those FinCEN regulations is a good thing or is it just something sort of, you know, to stall and prevent the inevitable of maybe they're going to really heavily regulate the backside out of it, considering some of the things that Janet Yellen said, you know, it's yeah it's like that double-edged sword you know this sounds good because he's obviously been involved in crypto so he's OCC but then we've got uh, Janet Yellen you know the SEC uh, and she has not said overly favorable things about cryptocurrencies love to know your thoughts down below do me a favor click that like button I really appreciate that gets my videos out there and seen hit the subscribe button tap that bell uh, and also you get all the latest videos from me stay safe be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.